The Roman Emperor Caracalla was certainly an interesting character. According to the ancient historians, he did such things as fighting as a gladiator, killing his brother as well as his wife and father-in-law, gave everyone in the empire Roman citizenship so he could tax them, and was responsible for the first use of Star Wars Order 66. Execute Order 66. Wait, what? Oh, we'll get to that one in a bit. Trust me. Well before George Lucas decided to rip Caracalla off and call him the Emperor Palpatine, he was born Lucius Septimius Bassinius, son of Septimius Severus, the founder of the Severan dynasty that included that heroic figure of Elagabalus. Check out the video on him. He was to have a childhood rivalry with his brother Geta that definitely wasn't foreshadowing any major adult issues or anything. You smell. I'm going to kill you for that. Luke and Leia, they certainly weren't. They competed with each other at everything and seemingly had a strong dislike for each other. Caracalla was favoured by being raised to co-emperor with his father, which I'm sure Geta helped him celebrate. He was also married off to the daughter of the emperor's favourite general, and, according to Dio, essentially Severus's boss, Fluvia Plautilla, daughter of Plautianus. So for a better fun, Plaut is Latvian for reap, and Annus is, well, yeah. So that makes him, if we hop our own languages a bit, bum reaper which would be one hell of a nickname. Now, Bum Reaper was a bit of a snake, and Caracalla hated his wife. So Caracalla came up with a scheme that would get rid of a loveless marriage and a snake all in one go. The overachiever. He had some Praetorian guard pretend they'd been hired by Plautianus to kill the Emperor Severus, his dad. The Emperor accepted this, and they cornered Plautianus, who hadn't even brought his scythe with him. Caracalla went to kill him, but Severus stopped him. So Caracalla ordered a Praetorian guard to do it which his dad seemed perfectly okay with. Isn't it heartwarming that his dad taught Caracalla the art of delegation early on? However, both boys, now young men, were rather, uh, playboyish in their ways, giving in to all sorts of decadent Roman pleasures and ignoring the importance of philosophy and the arts, which Severus was not happy about. He wasn't overly happy that Caracalla kept coming up with ways to try kill him either, but apparently that was lower on the list of complaints than sleeping around a bit. So he sent them off to join the army and marched them, along with himself, on Britain to finally subdue those Scots to the north of Hadrian's Wall. Cassius Dia's account on how us Brits lived is well worth a read. Who knew that we would spend days at a time submerged to our heads in swamps? Presumably, this was to make us some sort of alien Star Wars antagonist. Severus, by the way, had also done his bit as a forerunner to Emperor Palpatine by murdering huge numbers of the Senate. Severus, Caracalla and Geta achieved about as much in Scotland as you'd expect. Marched around a bit, had men die, then paid the Scots to pretend that they had lost. So plan A for a Roman invasion then. Daddy Dearest then bites the dust while still in Britain, so his sons and their mother have to march his body back to Rome. The kids do what kids do on all long journeys and started fighting, bickering and plotting the murder of their sibling. Was that just my family car journeys? After getting a clip upside their ear by Julia, their mother, sister to the other Julia from the Elagabalus video, an aunt to the other other Julia from that video, an aunt to the other other... Oh, for the love of God, I hate Roman naming conventions. Anyway, they stopped bickering enough that they decided to share the empire by splitting it in two which is obviously a shockingly bad idea that no emperor in their right mind would ever... Oh. Geta was to get the east, where he had a bit of a power base anyway, and Caracalla the west. But they argued a lot about that too, so their mother, being sick and tired of this, demanded they come to her and make peace. Now the way Roman emperors make peace with their siblings is very different to the way I do with mine. For me, as kids, we would pretend to be sorry in front of our parents, and as adults, we would unspeakingly agree to never mention the argument again. What we don't do is have guards come in, kill our sibling as they carry in their mother's arm, begging her to help. Guess which one Caracalla chose? So, with Caracalla and Geta now no longer talking about the argument they had, what with Geta now being dead, Caracalla ordered his mother never to cry about it and set about wiping all mentions of him from the public record. It can't be fatricide if your brother never existed. That left Caracalla as sole emperor, but one who had annoyed the supporters of his brother. So, what did he do? So he did the most sensible thing that any Roman emperor could do, ran to the army and promised them lots of money and favours. Then killed 20,000 supporters of his brother, as well as that of his wife who had been exiled. This angered many in the Senate, which Caracalla carefully managed by pretty much ignoring the Senate constantly and only bothering with a select few. 
When the white deer had his panties in a bunch, he allowed all exiles to return, even some pretty nasty ones, then exiled those who disagreed with him. Why do ancient historians always sound surprised by this? It is literally step three in becoming Roman Emperor. This is your lesson on becoming Roman Emperor, Caracalla. I hope you're taking notes back there. Yes, sir. Step one, kill everyone else that claims to be Emperor. Step two, pay the people with weapons lots of money to use those weapons on people that aren't you. Step three, kill or exile anyone that doesn't agree with you. Unfortunately, lessons are where Dio gets a bit contradictory. On the one hand, we are told that Caracalla has no regards for the arts or philosophy and look down on those educated in them. On the other hand, Dio says he would lock himself away all day, study with philosophers and was learning to play the lute, often whilst keeping the Senate standing around outside, having claimed he wanted their advice. I think I may have worked out why Dio didn't like him. No one likes lute players. But how can this possibly connect to Star Wars? OK, let's get to that, so that no one can accuse me of any clickbait shenanigans. First of all, you have to understand something about Caracalla. He was an Alexander the Great fanboy, and not just any fanboy either. Full on, believing he was a reincarnated Alexander level of fanboy. He started a Macedonian phalanx, as well as a Spartan one, kitted out with the gear of the era. He erected statues, promoted people with the same names as those who were close to Alexander, and even wrote Alexander the Musical, played entirely on a lute. Maybe that last one was just wishful thinking. I would watch the hell out of that. All of this is to say that when he heard that one of the power bases of his brother had been mocking him, he was upset. That power base? A Death Star. No, sorry, wrong script. Alexandria. Alexandria was famous for mocking people, apparently. Presumably all those burnt books had made their ways into the lungs of the people and given them superheroic sarcastic wit. Superheroic sarcastic wit? Captain Sarcasm? Not really what I had in mind. Anyway, he's grumpy with the Alexandrians, but decides to go there to see one of the places his hero built and to show them who can be the most sarcastic. To prove his wit, he says he's raising a legion of Alexandrians to follow in the footsteps of his hero, and that every boy and young man in the area was to gather on the plains so that he may select them for a phalanx to honour Alexander, as he had done so with the Macedonians. This they did, and Caracalla moved between each of those, inspecting the boys, complimenting them, laughing with them, and so forth. He then concluded his inspection and walked away, at which point his army, which had been circled around the Alexandrians to watch, sprung forward and slaughtered not just the young men and boys, but the loved ones that had come to watch. Now tell me that is not Order 66. The younglings of his enemy were no more. The army then marched into the city and slaughtered wantonly for a while before they eventually moved on. And so is the cost of being sarcastic. I may need to consider my video style from now on. And if you think this Order 66 was a one-off, nope. Dio claims he did the same when campaigning in Germania, only this time promising to make the tribespeople mercenaries and then cutting them down. He campaigned a lot, with some success in Germania in conquering the Osrioni and nominally the Seni. However, Dio claims that he beat the Osrioni by underhanded tricks and he just paid the Seni to say they lost. Caracalla won territory off the Parthians, but apparently disbanded the army as soon as the scare king of Parthia gave up those territories, instead of pressing his advantage. You might think I'm skimming over his successes, and you'd be right. But that's because we're reporting on Dio and Herodian, and they both skim over the successes with small jibes about him being underhanded and honourless. Almost as if they had an axe to bury with him. Now, all this campaigning and paying off barbarians into telling people they lost was expensive. He debased the currency as much as he could get away with, but was as still as skint as me after a drinking session in London. So, he came up with a plan. Since only citizens were eligible to pay many of the taxes, he realised that he needed more citizens. So, he made every freeborn or freed man male in the empire a Roman citizen. Which sounds all well and good, but does come with some nasty T's and C's a load of taxes, which he could use to fund his campaigns. But Caracalla was doomed to meet the Reaper. Presumably not the Bum Reaper, but honestly, I do think that the Grim Reaper needs a makeover, so I'm going to go with it whilst campaigning. It's claimed that he had Macrinus, one of his two generals, open his mail whilst on campaign. Macrinus had been mocked a fair bit by Caracalla for liking his food a bit too much, I can empathise, and so was a little peeved by the body shaming. One of the letters Macrinus opened was advice that it would be a good idea to kill Macrinus. Oh dear. A letter Macrinus was obviously a little hesitant to pass on. 
So Macrinus turned to one of Caracalla's bodyguards, Martialis, and suggested he kill the emperor. Martialis, who had watched Caracalla kill his brother on unproved grounds and had been subject to homophobic accusation from Caracalla, wondered why he didn't think of this first. So he killed him and legged it, and Macrinus fell down weeping over the dead emperor. At this point, the army was so over this video that they decided to make Macrinus emperor and get on with their lives. Which wasn't very long, as Macrinus barely lasted a year before Elagabalus sashayed his way into the purple. Thanks for watching.